Okay, so I'm here to talk to you all about a very serious topic, and that is the Day of Judgment. And the reason that I was choosing this topic um, when they asked me what I wanted to talk about, and I chose the Day of Judgment, is because um, Ramadan is coming up. And um, who knows what happens during Ramadan to our deeds? Yeah. Okay, that's, th yeah, yes. What else? What else? No, I just want a, fact a factual thing that happens to our deeds. So our deeds multiply. Someone said it here. Yeah, they, they multiply many times, right? So um, so on the Day of Judgment, um, I, I, when, I, when, I, when I studied it and when I, um, when, I, when I learned about it more intensely, I realized that one of the key elements of the Day of Judgment and doing well on the Day of Judgment is, is being, um, being competitive and and quit and and um, harsh on yourself about getting deeds, about about being the best Muslim you can be, and about you know like just bringing in the good deeds, just like racking them racking them up, right? And and the reason that I noticed this is is because of the way that it was taught it was taught to me. So I'm gonna try to relay that back to you, inshallah. Oh, that's to do the slides. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay. Jazakallah khair. All right, so here's a tour of the Day of Judgment. Bismillah. So we g we're going to start with the trumpet, right? So, so the trumpet, there's a, they say two or three trumpets, right? So the first trumpet, or the first two, are for terror and death. That's when everything in the earth and the heavens is destroyed. Everything collapses. Everything, the, the, everything goes boom, basically, okay? And, um, and everything dies, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains, remains uh, of course, living, ever living, and, but everything else is just dead non-existent like we're, we're just not there anymore and it's not even that we're in our graves like kind of alive no we're dead like dead completely and um so, so Allah subhanahu wa stays in the state for 40 40 hours 40 days 40 months we don't know how long they just say 40 right and we don't ask why because who cares like <laughs> we're dead anyways right so um so then the resurrection happens okay and the resurrection is uh is um prompted by this trumpet by the sound of a trumpet, it's a horn, and uh, and that w almost wakes us up. So the resurrection, we are born almost anew. Okay, and um, unlike so now the way that we grew up, the way we formed our bodies is you know in our mother's wombs. We it was careful, it took time, but on the on on Yom Al Qiyamah, it's going to be a quick raising, and that form is going to be a new form, and it's it's we're going to look different. It's going to look a little different. And we're g going to be raised um, completely naked, completely new. Um, and and, and when, we, when we wake up, it's going to be harsh, right? So we're going to wake up, we're going to come out of our graves and um, in a new form. And subhanAllah, it's not just us that, that's changed. And, and it's, there's ca we wake up to basically chaos. The earth is different. The earth is like flattened out. There are no markings. There aren't trees. There aren't mountains. There's no rivers. There's no lakes. And everything, um, everything is just flat. And all around you are, are creatures. Every single creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that he ever created. So I'm talking about animals, jinn, mankind, angels. I mean, like dinosaurs. You know, like <laughs> everything is there. And we're all running. And everyone's running. And everyone's like rushing. And behind you, you notice, subhanAllah, that, uh, that there's a fire. And it's, it's gathering everyone to a certain place. Okay, and it's gathering everyone to this place. So um, in that gathering, like I said, our humans, gens, and then w it starts to split people up. So um, so we're all divided into groups, right? So there are the believers and the disbelievers, uh, the the people, the the ummah of Muhammad, the um, and, and and then divided into the, the different ummah that we have. So we're all going to be behind the Prophet Sallallahu and then further into further groups and further groups until so we're all grouped off. And um, and this is where where uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said we're going to be with those who we, whom we love on the day of judgment. So we've gathered, right? And and you notice everyone's everyone's different. So meanwhile, you know you're stepping on something, and it's uh, and of course you don't notice because it's like maybe an ant or something, but it's really a human being the size of an ant, 
right? And this is well, this was an arrogant person. So here's some of the forms that we come into. Um, wudu. So people of wudu, they come and they look different. The people who used to make wudu, they come and their limbs and their faces are shiny from from the wudu that they used to make. Um, charity. So so our deeds are actually become a part of who we are. Do you see what I mean? Um, charity, like, so the sun is really close on that day, right? So it's hot. And as we're gathering, everyone's, everyone's sweating. And, um, and some people, their, their charity becomes like a cloud over them. Um, there are people who are wealthy beggars. They come with no faces, right? Thieves are carrying things around. The things that they used to, <laughs> things that they stole, they're carrying them around on the day of judgment when the sun is this close. And so everyone, everyone's there, and it's uh, they're sweating, and they're they're um, how much time do I have? Okay, they're they're sweating, and 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 the sweat is accumulating. So for some people, the sweat is reaching up to their ankles. For some people, the their sweat is reaching up to here, here, here. And some people are drowning in their sweat. Of course, they can't die, so it's just a perpetual drowning. And this goes on for years and years, where we're all just waiting. And then, in that time. Suddenly, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to, comes to us, right? And along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are rows and rows and rows of angels, millions and millions and billions of angels. And do you know, I, I mean, from here to the heavens, there's billions of angels. Just like every, every space, you can't imagine how many angels there are. And all the angels will be there. And along with them, they're, they're bringing forth heaven, and heaven will be brought close to the believers. So you can, you can imagine all the believers are here, kind of, you know, on, on one side. And then, and then Jannah is brought tor- towards them. And then there's the dif- disbelievers. And hellfire is not brought. They're, like, could you imagine, like, a wild beast and how it's, how it's chained? And could you imagine them holding, holding, holding the beast back because it, it's walking? So there are angels 70, 000, holding 70,000 chains. Each chain is held by 70,000 angels. All of these angels are holding back hellfire, trying to stop it from, from, from devouring these disbelievers, from devouring evildoers. Because hellfire is not just a big ball of fire. It is a creation of Allah. It has, it has a voice. It speaks. It, it has a will, and its will is that it just wants to devour any any evil doer in sight. It just wants to consume them. And so um, these angels are holding back the hellfire from from attacking <laughs> attacking these disbelievers. And then, what happens? Then we wait. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, and the scholars say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that state is the most angry that we can see him. The most angry that we've that anyone can see him. And people are scared. And the people know this and they're terrified. They're looking at hellfire, they're looking at ju- it's right there. And the people who denied it for so long, even the people who believed it are like, What? It's right here. And and they're just waiting. So everyone is consumed with this idea of, okay, where am I going? What am I doing? And, and, and they're thinking about all that they did. And, and where, you know, am I going to Jannah? Am I going to Jahannam? Some of them know and some of them don't know. And, and so they're consumed by this idea. And everyone, this lasts, you guys, for a long time. So years and years. This, the scholars say 50,000 years. The, there's a hadith that says 50,000 years. We're in this state of waiting. All right, so so that's standing. So we're standing in rows, and we are waiting. So towards the end of that, people start to say, okay, we need to, like, they get sick of it, right? <laughs> they, they're like, well, you know what? Heaven or hell, wherever I'm going, I, I, I got it because it's torture. They're just waiting, and they're anticipating. And did, Have you ever waited for an exam exam score to come out? Like, like, what, what did I get? Did I pass? Didn't I pass? Did I get the score I needed to, to get the A or to get the B or to pass the class? You know, and, and you're waiting, and, and maybe you go to the page where the score is going to be, and you keep refreshing, keep pressing refresh, keep pressing, pressing refresh. That's a, their state. Is it going to happen now? Is the law going to start the judgment now? How about now? And, and that's the state that they're in. They're just waiting. And so they start to go to the MBA, and they're like, come on. You, Adam, go, you know, Adam alayhi salam, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you with his own, own hands. You go and ask Allah to start. And, and Adam's like, no, are you kidding me? You know, no, I'm not, I can't. Nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, I sinned. 
and I can't, I can't do it. So, so each of the prophets are, 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 are pl- the people plead with them, please go to Allah, ha- have him start the judgment. And, and each of them say no, except for our prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he, he says, and every, every other prophet said, uh, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. And he said, ummati, ummati. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu rushes to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and he goes into sujood until Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala allows him to rise. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala teaches him words, um, a, a new form of du'a, a new du'a to say. And, and, he's, and, he's, and he's able to, to in, in, invocate on behalf of the, the, all of mankind to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So he's basically just there praying, praying, praying until Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala like, tells him to rise and says, for you, whatever you need on this day. And, uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu says, I'm interceding that we start the judgment. All right? So this is the major interse- intercession. There we go. <laughs> All right, so next, what happens? So then, uh, suddenly, everyone's, uh, it's time for the books to come. And, and books are coming down. And some people are receiving it in their right hand. And some people are receiving it in their left hand, right? So right hand, yes. <laughs> left hand, bad. <laughs> it's a bad thing when you get it in your left hand. So people on the right hand, they receive it. And they're like, yes, I, I did it. I passed. And they're showing people their books. And, and even the fact that there are sins, by the, by the end of their sins, it's like, you've, and you've been forgiven for these sins. And then it shows all of their good deeds. And they, show ra- they go around there bla- bragging about it. And then the people who receive it on their left hand receive it behind their backs because they know they knew it was coming and they didn't want it they didn't want it to happen. So so they get it in their left hands. Okay. Alright. So then next is the questioning. Right. So a- after you get the, de- the, the deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala b- brings you forth one by one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you individually about your deeds. And the first thing you're asked about is what? Your prayer. And subhanAllah, you guys, if your, your prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look at the fard. If, it's, if that's complete, you go on to the next question. If it's not, he'll go to the voluntary prayers did you, did, and try to fill in the spaces, the gaps of things that you missed. And if that's not enough, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends you to hellfire until you can make, make up those prayers and then, and then continue the judgment. So that's that's basically what happens to to us with our prayer. If, you, if the prayer is complete, you go on. You uh, you're asked about your life and how you spent it, your knowledge, how you acted upon it, your wealth, how it was earned and spent, and your body and how you used it. So each of these things. So and you have witnesses to each of these things. So it's just a witnessing. So you're basically just going through each deed, each deed, each deed, and and you're you're being asked about that. Then the scales are brought. So the scales, when the scales are brought, um, our, our deeds are then measured. So some people didn't even make it to the scales, right? <laughs> some people haven't, haven't even made it to the scales. And, um, and people who, uh, who, who you know, had good deeds, let's say that they were non-Muslim and they didn't do it for the sake of Allah, maybe they did it for some other god or some other idol. And so on that day of judgment, let's say they, you know, they did some really you know, good things, but it wasn't for Allah's sake, that those good deeds will come like dust. Like, have you ever seen a fire? And like the ashes, like the little pieces of like, like, sp- like ash and stuff that come, come, come out and they're just like flitting and, and they, they go up through the wind. That's how their good deeds come out. And so there's no weight to them. But, um, but there are some examples of, of some, some, so what, what fills the scales on the Day of Judgment? Um, the good scales. So when you have the kid, when you have good character, uh, all these things fill up your scales, right? And, um, and after everyone's, everyone's uh, done with their scale, then um, they pass by the, the pool. So some people um, finally get to the pool. So at this point, the, the disbelievers are mostly like in hellfire. Like at this point, it's mainly just the Muslims, and um, and so people don't know this, but it's Muslims who a lot of this stuff is happening to. Usually, people think, "Oh, I'm Muslim, so I'm going to get through this part." No, <laughs> it's all Muslims. So the next part is the the pool, and of course, it doesn't look like this. Nobody think that it, that it looks like this, right? This is just an example for you to imagine it, all right? So imagine you come upon the pool, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 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 giving us to drink from it. And of course, we've been waiting 50,000 years <laughs> for a drink of water, and the sun was this close. Um, so everyone's thirsty. So so the, the believers on that day, 
sincere believers are able to go up to the pool and, and the Prophet gives them of the of this um, pool to drink. And the pool comes directly as a line from a river of the Prophet that belongs to the Prophet called Al Kawthar. And when you drink this water, it is is it's white like honey. Uh, it's white like milk, excuse me, and it um it's sweet and it, you never are th you never have thirst you're never thirsty again. But some people are kept back from that pool. And those people who are so thirsty on that day and are kept back from the pool are the hypocrites, right? Are the hypo hypocrites and the innovators. So so while all this stuff was happening, <laughs> everyone's been been gathered into their groups, the hypocrites kind of slipped in, right? The people who really didn't belong there, they got their hand their books in the left hand. They they've been kind of slipping in, they've been slipping by. So then after this a uh, fog comes b comes upon the upon everyone and uh, and th this fog all you see is what you worshiped right so people start to disperse and follow what they worshiped right so what did you worship what was what was your idol right so for some people um they they you know if they worshiped like Jesus, they're going to be following a cross. If they worship the sun, they're going to be following the sun. If, if they're going to be, they worshiped anything else, they follow those things right into hellfire. Okay? And then, um, but then the Muslims come, they're gathered, and then Allah comes to them co sort of disguised. And, and the believers ask Allah, okay, so, uh, they, they, Allah asks, okay, so, you know, I'm Allah, and then they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> they don't believe him. And, and Allah said, well, how do you know it's me? It'll be me. And then they, s they describe the signs of how they would know that it's Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals himself t to them. And so then people, some people are able to make sujood and some people aren't. Right? SubhanAllah. And, um, let's see what happens then. All right, so after that, went over the, and then the fog comes down, and everyone's following what they worshipped, and then they come to the bridge, right? The Sirat. So at the Sirat, um, the Sirat is a very, it's very thin. It's like sharp as a razor, and it's uh, thinner than a hair, and it's thinner than hair. And, um, and people, according to their deeds, again, are able to pass by it quickly and, and have light. So it's basically, it's not like this, it's, it's dark. And, and, um, and the people who had great, a lot of good deeds and had sincere character and all those things, based on the amount of deeds that they had, that's how much light they have and how much speed they have, right? So, so in order to get to Jannah, you have to pass over the Sirat. Nobody gets through to Jannah until they cross this, this, this path right and imagine trying to cross like something razor sharp and so thin um without without any light so basically you have that light based on your deeds imagine like a video game like you get charged up <laughs> and you get supersonic speed from your deeds right and that's and that's how it goes and people who don't have that they just fall in they just fall and um and so uh, some people, so they're hypocrites, right? They're still in, right? They're still in the group of Muslims. They sort of snuck in, and they're like, "Oh yes, I got in. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not, not gonna lose out today." And then they, um, they, th but then um, they don't have any light. So they ask the believers, "Give us some light. Give us some light." And they say, "No, no, go back. Go back. Get, 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 get your own light. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm busy. Get, you know, I'm busy crossing my own bridge." And so they go back, and then there's like a tunnel, and then they fall into a hellfire, and that's and that's how they how they get out. They they think they're in, they think they're in, and then they fall in at the last minute. So then the um, after you cross the Sirat, right? There's um, there's another bridge um, that a lot of people don't know about, and so you know those uh, who who's heard that like when you backbite someone, um, they take your good deeds. Right, and if you don't have any good deeds, then 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 they start to pile on your sins, right? Their sins. So there are some people who have gotten to this point, who cross the sirat, who drink from the pool, who um who like got their deeds weighed, who like had all their prayers, who had all this thicket, who had all these good deeds, right? And so they come, they come at the end, and they they're at the bridge, and maybe they harmed this Muslim or they backbit this person, or they said this mean thing to another person, or they cheated another person. And so each of these people, 
Muslims will come and take their recompense. And then those those people will pass this point right before they get to the gates of Jannah and they go to hellfire to because of that. They go to hellfire to repay all those debts and to 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 do their time for the sins of other people who they harmed. Right? So that's the qantara. So hopefully inshallah we've gotten to this point and um and after that after this, you guys, after we hopefully we've gotten to this point and, and we've not harmed people, <laughs> right? And so then we join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the rest of the and the rest of the Muslims and the rest of the believers and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam starts knocking on the gates of paradise. And and then an angel answers and says, Who is it? <laughs> and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, It's me, Muhammad. Uh, the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, and they said, We've been waiting for you and we weren't gonna open it for anyone except you. And then the Prophet is the first to enter paradise and along with him comes everyone else. And and that's and then everyone, you know, is, is in paradise and they're enjoying it. And alhamdulillah, you know, may Allah make us among those in, that are in paradise. But that was a quick tour of the day of judgment. So the reason I said this, you guys, is because um, you know, the, we need a lot of good deeds, right? And and in order to get through all these stages in the, on the Day of Judgment, we need a lot of good deeds and we need to lessen our sins. And the way, the way to do that is, number one, Ramadan, right? Um, in the nation's past, some people lived longer than, than we did. They lived a lot longer. And, and be, you know, because of that, they got more opportunities, maybe. To make up for that, we get Ramadan. <laughs> and so every year we have this opportunity where deeds are multiplied and multiplied. And if we don't take advantage of that, we're just going to be bankrupt on the Day of Judgment. We're not going to have those good deeds to get through all these phases. So may Allah make us of those who enter paradise and make the Day of Judgment so easy for us and make it without any hisab. Um,